almost Christmas, so I thought I'd dress a little more festively. What do you think? So I want to start this one off with a little story that I heard a long time ago from a very awesome motivational speaker, Zig Ziglar. You've probably heard of him. He did a lot of speaking back in the 70s and 80s, maybe even the 60s. But he's one of my true heroes to this day. So it starts out with a husband and a wife, and they're newly married, and they're just about to prepare Thanksgiving dinner. So the wife brings out the ham. She sets it down on the counter and then whacks the end of the ham right off the ham. The husband says, why'd you do that? Why did you cut the end of the ham off? And the wife says, well, that's the way my mother always did it. It's the way to do it. It's the only way to do it. it makes it taste better. So the husband thinks about it and says, I'm going to call your mom up and I'm going to find out why she cuts the end of the ham off. So he picks up the phone, calls his mother-in-law and says, why do you always cut the end of the ham off at Thanksgiving? And the mom says, well, that's because that's the way my mom always did it. It's the only way to do it. It makes the ham taste better. So the husband is just flabbergasted and he sits there and out of curiosity, he says, I'm going to solve this three generation mystery right now. We're going to call up grandma and find out exactly why she cuts the end of the ham off. So he picks up the phone, calls grandma. Grandma, why do you always cut the end of the ham off for Thanksgiving? The grandma says, because my oven's too small. <laughs> I like that one. So grandma had a reason to cut the end of the ham off. Her oven was too small. The ham didn't fit in there, so she cut it off. And her daughter watched her do that all those years. And so she thought that was the way it had to be done. And her daughter watched her, and on and on and on. And so it became a sacred cow in which everybody in the family for generations cut the end of the ham off because that's the way it's always been done, and that's the way it should be done. But it turns out that that's not the way it should be done. They were wasting ham. And when it comes to the world of plant propagation, you knew I'd tie it in there eventually, it's the same exact thing. A lot of times we do things because that's the way it's always been done. But I'm here to tell you right now, sometimes the way it's always been done may not be the best way to do it. So I saw a post in our Facebook group the other day and the person had taken hardwood cuttings and then put covers over top of them. And I see this a lot, and I especially see it in the fig propagation world. Now, I am not the plant propagation police. You can do whatever you want in your home. However, after years of trial and error and experience doing cuttings here on my own place, I can tell you beyond the shadow of a doubt that you don't need to cover hardwood cuttings. In fact, it might be detrimental to your success. Now I have a theory and it goes like this. I think once upon a time, some very nice, well-meaning fig grower who loved figs with all his heart said, hey, if I could propagate these things, then I wouldn't have to buy so many of them, or maybe I could even sell them. So he set out on a mission to learn how to propagate his figs. And maybe he went to the library and he grabbed a book on propagation. How do I propagate these things? And he looked up plant propagation. And as most propagation books and, and learning articles and videos and things start out with, it always kind of goes right into softwood cuttings because that's what most people do. That's probably one of the easiest ways to propagate plants. And so he read that you have to take the cutting and stick it in medium and then cover it to maintain 100% humidity. But that's for softwood cuttings, guys, not for hardwood cuttings. With hardwood cuttings, you don't want to cover them. So let's dive in a little bit closer. Why do we cover our cuttings at all? Well, we cover them because we want to maintain humidity because they're soft wood or maybe semi-hardwood and they have leaves that transpire and they lose a lot of moisture. And if you didn't cover them, they dry out, they wither up and just die eventually. So we cover them to maintain humidity so that those cuttings stay turgid and healthy and viable until they can form roots that go down and suck up their own moisture. So if that's why we cover our cuttings, our soft wood or semi-hardwood cuttings, then why are we covering our hardwood cuttings? Because there's another little scenario that this all involves, and that is problems, detriments, disease, fungus, all kinds of issues that come along with more humidity. So in your softwood cuttings, 
they root faster because they're softwood cuttings. They're younger, they're more succulent, the growth is new and fresh and green, and they just want to put down roots. So they'll root within two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, six weeks, whatever. They're rooting quick. And then you can take the tops off and you can allow them to start growing on their own. But with hardwood cuttings, they don't root as fast. And so all the problems that you worry about, like the fungus diseases and the pests and all the little things that start getting in there and eating your cuttings alive, become more of a problem with hardwood cuttings that are covered than softwood cuttings. Because the hardwood cuttings take way longer to root. And if you cover them, you're just leaving that whole area humid and moist and damp and maybe warm if you're using bottom heat and you're just breeding fungus and diseases constantly that will just chew up and eat up your cutting before it gets a chance to root. Before it gets a chance to root. It's cold out, guys. But with softwood cuttings, all those problems are still there, but they root so fast it's not a problem. They root, you take the cover off, and they grow. So back to the figs. In the beginning, when I started rooting fig cuttings, I just googled how to root fig cuttings and I found all kinds of articles and I found videos on people rooting these things because that's how it been, had been passed down from generation to generation of fig propagators. You gotta cover the cuttings. Well, I didn't have much success in the beginning and when I get on these fig forums I find a lot of people complaining about how their cuttings are rotting or they're having issues. They're getting the green growth before they get the bottom growth and the problem is they're covering their cuttings. Now, like I said, I'm not the rooting police. I'm just Mike Kincaid. I'm just hanging out here trying to help you guys. But if you're wanting to do this smartly and scientifically and get a high percentage of rooting success, then you definitely don't want to cover your hardwood cuttings. And that's not going to go for just the figs. That's going to go for all hardwood cuttings. They don't have leaves. They're dormant. They don't, they don't lose moisture and transpire through the rooting process. You keep them out in the cold, you keep the bottoms warm, you keep them completely uncovered, and you allow them to root. Or you allow them to callus, develop callus around the ends, and then take them off the heat, and then let them slowly root through the spring as the weather warms up. We can get more into this later if you want. I'll do more videos on this topic. In fact, it's winter time. Maybe I need to start doing some more hardwood cuttings to help you guys with that. But for now, all I can tell you is, if it were me, I'd uncover the suckers. Get the covers off those hardwood cuttings and stop creating more problems for yourself. Now, what can we root as hardwood cuttings? Well, that's probably going to have to go into a few other new videos. And we'll work on that as we go down the road. But a lot of things can be rooted as hardwood cuttings. They just take a lot longer. But some things can only be rooted as hardwood cuttings. And they can go quicker, like the figs. And some of them take a little longer. But anyway, they can be fun through the winter when there's nothing else to do. So once again, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to follow along and see all these things wake up in the spring. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios! Oh yeah, Merry Christmas, guys, and I hope you all have a Happy New Year. And just to make sure I cover all my bases, Happy Hanukkah, Joyous Kwanzaa, Yuletide Greetings, Happy Holidays, Joy Noel, Feliz Navidad, Season's Greetings, Happy New Year, Joy, Celebrate, Be Merry! Wishing you a lake fun this Hanukkah? Bah humbug. <laughs> Fruitcake's in the mail. Jeez, I need to get a job.